this is our um, introduction to reasoning to gather. Uh, this is the podium version of it, uh, where I have my co-host, if you want to call it that, um, TJ. And I guess you guys are kind of familiar with me uh, with um, another segment that I do on my channel uh, with my wife called One Plus One Equals One. And so um, this is one of the other ones that I was telling you guys about. Um, that, and we're finally getting it ready to get set off. And uh, today we're just going to kind of introduce ourselves a little bit just so you kind of get to know us. Um, my my co-host is a little camera shy, as you can see, uh, but I don't think they really are. But they just choose not to not have the video going at this moment of the of the um, of the, the the show, for lack of better words. Um, but <clears throat> they they are willing to uh, they are very willing to lend their their voices, which over time I'm pretty sure you're going to find annoying at times because. Uh, the thing that's unique about us is we don't all agree on everything. What we do agree on, though, is that, um, you know, we're all Christian men, and um, the Bible is the sole authority of what we believe in, um, according to, you know, our views. And that's, those are going to be some things that you're going to see coming into a view in our discussions. Um, and um, we're, we're, we're also even willing to have others who... Um, might disagree with us or even agree with uh, some of the things that we say uh, to come on because it's all about reasoning together. And um, um, I, and I, I get this from um, Isaiah, uh, I believe it's an Isaiah, oh wow, I should at least know where it's at. But I know it's an Isaiah, um, I think it's Isaiah seven something, right? Um, correct me if I'm wrong guys. Um, but uh, where, where the Lord is asking the Israelites to come reason together with them. But I kind of tweaked it a little bit and said reasoning together so that we can gather amongst each other with reasoning. Um, and, um, and, and, and the way I feel about it is, you know, even if we disagree or just because we disagree, doesn't mean we have to be enemies. And so that's kind of a slogan that I came up with um, just so that, you know, we kind of just put things out there and just talk about it, you know. Um, uh, so again, we're going to kind of uh, introduce ourselves. Again, my name is CD, uh, as you can see my name tag there. And um, uh, the question that um, I want us to kind of discuss and, and talk about is why Jesus? Why did I choose Jesus? Um, there's a plethora of religious beliefs out there, even amongst the Christian faith. And, um, but yet, and still, you know, um, uh, uh, the the, the object of religion and the different beliefs and structures and doctrines is still um, something to be, um, to me, discussed, you know. Um, so the, re the religion or the faith that I choose is, is uh, I like to say Bible faith. I, I, I believe that the Bible is the sole authority of God. And uh, I believe that it is, um, um, it, it speaks for the Lord. It's a living book. Um, and, it, and it's the only book that tells us that we are saved by a savior who loves us basically more than himself because he sacrificed his life for us. And so when I say why Jesus, um, it's because, um, you know, um, uh, there's so many aspects that proves who he is and even his deity. Um, uh, the time that he would come um, and um, what, what his mission was for the world. Uh, we have eyewitness uh, uh, eye eyewitness um, testimonies. We have historical. We have archaeological. We have geographical. And um, when you start putting all these things together, you know, it, it like basically it it it, it rests its own case. It, it speaks for itself. Truth, history, and those sorts of things. And so, and he a personal guy that I've also have been able to experience for myself as well. Someone whom I could talk to just as real as someone's best friend, wife, or even dog is to them as they sit there and talk to them and confide in them or whatever is the same kind of relationship I have with Jesus. And so, um, you know, he's a very real, real and living um, uh, personal savior in God to me. And so uh, when I say why Jesus, that's, that's why. So we're going to go ahead and open up the podium to, to one of my co-hosts co here, and that'll be uh, TJ. And so, um, TJ, who are you, buddy? 
why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Who am I? Do you mean that uh, by way of simple introduction or are you meaning more in the existential, uh, existential sort of way? Well, sir, well, I, um, <laughs> whatever you would like to share with, um, with um, whomever we're sharing with, uh, you know, uh, I'm okay with. So gotcha. uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm just, uh, I guess, a simple country kind of guy, uh -huh. uh, you know, from West Central Wisconsin. And I, uh, you know, enjoy all the, you know, major country boy activities like, you know, hunting and fishing and Green Bay Packer football, as opposed to, you know, those dastardly Vikings uh, next door. <laughs> So, and of course, I've been trying to, you know, show someone the light for years, but uh, CD just can't seem to quite get with the program there, but hey. Oh, mercy. You no know, one's perfect. No one's perfect. <laughs> so otherwise, yeah, I've, uh, as far as why Jesus, I'd have to say, you know, I, you know, there's a Bible verse that raises up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. And Praise God, my folks definitely did that, you know, going to coach from the time I was about three years of age and onward. And, but then as I got older in my twenties uh, and thirties, I just found that, you know, it became much more personal, much more, you know, the saying is God has no grandchildren. He only has children. Amen. And so, yeah, I could definitely feel that. You know, I was getting closer to him. And even when, you know, I could feel myself drifting from him because of my own idiocy in life, you know, I always, there was always that, that heart pull that, hey, you know, I know I'm doing wrong. I need to head back home, quote unquote, as it were, with the Lord. Amen. And so, you know, praise God, he's been, you know, kind of keeping me from going off the rails too far, I think. But, um, and then the other, I guess, main reason that I really appreciate my relationship with the Lord is uh, there's a hymn uh, in Christ alone, and there's one bar in it that just really, you know, has stuck in my mind, and that is uh, no guilt in life, no fear of death. That's the power of yeah. Christ in me. And so, you know, obviously, you know, I, you know, sin and fail like any other man, perhaps, you know, more than some, but, you know, I always turn to the Lord, his, uh, in Lamentations chapter three, it says his mercies are new every morning. And so, you know, I definitely know that, you know, as I turn to him, you know, he removes my sins as far as the East are from the West. And so that, you know, relieves me from having to carry around that load of guilt, you know, day to day in life. And I think that's has an even physiological effect on us, I, I do believe. And then as far as, you know, when contemplating ultimate realities, you know, as far as if, you know, you were to come to your deathbed or whatnot, you know, I know some people, you know, just the very thought leaves them in cold sweats, shuddering in terror, where, you know, yeah, I, obviously, I don't want that to happen immediately, but it doesn't hold the terror that it does for, you know, others that don't have that blessed hope as the Bible, the Bible speaks of it as. So I guess that would, uh, you know, and on top of that, you know, the Bible is replete with, you know, prophetic you know, proves messianic prophecies, right, right? You know, of Jesus, so that it's not just, you know, I kind of looked at the pantheon of gods and I'm like, hey, I kind of like this one. There's actually, you know, kind of a, the Bible carries within itself a set of credentials that the thinking man, the intelligent man, can mull over, look at, and say, hey, there's something more here than just you know, human engineering or so on. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, you made, you put a lot, you, you made a lot of good points there. 
And um, I just want to kind of go back to uh, the whole Green Bay thing, you know, uh, just so <laughs> you, know, you, got, you guys saw me wear my Minnesota hats, you know, and so I represent Minnesota, he represents Wisconsin, and we're neighbors, but yet we don't get along <laughs> as far as the sports world is concerned. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so um, we, we have a little tease going back and forth about that. That's something else that we're reasoning together about. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> Yeah. Um, someday I, you'll see the light, bro. Someday. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. Yeah. Uh, but as you can see, I have Jamaica on right now representing. I'm actually in the, in the island of Jamaica right now where my wife is. And, uh, you know, just kind of representing this area with uh, my hat and my shirt. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and uh, just representing Jamaica um, for my, my wife's homeland. But yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I grew up in Minnesota. And so uh, that's my homeland for now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, um, introduce uh, 3 a.m. Wake Up, uh, uh, otherwise known by PJ. Uh, how you doing, bro? Hey, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Amen. Uh, Who are you? Peace be unto you all. Uh, uh, well, I'm a child of God. I uh, once was lost, <laughs> now found was blind and now I see that's my story in a nutshell and so Amen. yes uh, i just want to jump into why i believe you are the major points on the on the head um i believe that jesus provides the best answer for life's most important questions who am i why am i here how did i get here where am I going? You know, it, 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 it gives the answer for And so that- out. You cutting out a little bit, bro. Uh, no. Okay. All right, we can hear you now though, go ahead. Okay, so yes, it gives the best answers for life's best, uh, most important questions. And I will, I will uh, leave it there for now. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. And so, um, uh, just to uh, kind of piggyback on where I started at, um, uh, both uh, TJ and PJ are very dear and close uh, brothers of mine. As I said before, we all don't agree on a lot, but we agree on a lot, if, uh, if that makes sense. Um, but um, uh, I've known them both for um, some years uh, as a Christian man, and um, they both have proven um, um, their, how do I say, um, like we, 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 we became close over a amount of years of just talking to each other, uplifting each other, praying for each other, and that sort of thing. And so um, I definitely trust the, the two of these brothers as if they were my brothers. And uh, they're definitely uh, dear brothers in Christ um, to me. And, um, you know, um, so, yeah, um, I wouldn't want any conversation that I might have with either of them, you know, um, to bring any kind of misunderstanding of our, our relationship that we have together. You know, um, reasoning together um, can at times become a passionate conversation. Uh, although, you know, we want to keep it as cordial as possible, but, you know, there are some things that we're all passionate about, but um, the fact that we're all totally passionate about Jesus and his word, it's, it's the thing that keeps us glued together. So I just kind of wanted to bring out that little disclaimer before we move on to our, our next question. And um, uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start with you this time, PJ. What would you like to see done for the Lord's work and what are you doing to accomplish that work? Hey, if I could uh, butt in just for a quick second. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you wanted to do it now or defer it to the end of our talk, you know, our discourse here, as far as kicking around, you know, we're gonna keep the, the uh, you know, the gathering together or whatever. You know, our reasoning together, we're going to keep that. But as far as this specific reoccurring like part of that, 
a name for it? Do you want to kick around names right now or at the end? <laughs> the only reason, only reason I say that is I just you know what is wrong with recording. <laughs> what up? What's Go that? ahead. What is it? What do you got in mind, bro? No, 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 no. So, it, and again, this will be in conjunction with yours, but it just right. hit me, and I thought it was super ingenious. And if you don't like it, uh, I still think it's awesome. I will tell you but, right now, I don't like it, but go ahead and try it. All right, 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 right. So here it is. You know, your C.D. Simmons, he's P.J. something or other. And so I'm T.J. Razor and whatnot. So all three of us got initials. So I was thinking one of two names, you know, that we initials we go by. So either the initials crew or the essentials initials crew. No. Very central. <laughs> no. Come on, Absolutely man. Not. That is so cool. <laughs> no. Both of those are like, man, <laughs> if I was working at a marketing firm, I'd be paychecking it right there. Uh, no. no. <laughs> man, you, okay, you come up with a cooler idea. I, I, I just like to keep it at reasoning together, bro. It just makes it simple. Yeah, but you're gonna be like doing different segments. Yeah, yeah. And so this is like this one segment of it. You know, this okay. is like, you know, the three of us. Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. I you sure can. Sit, you don't I know a good name when you see I, it. I sure can sit here, my brother. I. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, back to the question at hand. Um, right. But hey, I, I I'll consider. I'll consider. But thanks for uh, thanks for bringing that out there while we're recording, mind you. Um, You're welcome, uh, PJ. Um, we're going to start with you this time. What would you like to see done uh, for the Lord's work in these times that we're living in? Uh, and you know, what are you doing to do your part? You might have fallen asleep on us. <laughs> Must have. Uh, let's see. Get it? Three M. Wake up. Fall asleep. <laughs> ah. All right, go, go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and divert the question to you, TJ. And then, uh, All right. yeah. Well, I guess I would start, you know, right directly with the, uh, you know, the gospel directive that we're to, you know, go you there for and make disciples of all nations, you know, and baptize you and that kind of thing. You know, so we have a, a direct commission to reach out to anyone within our circle of influence. And so, and but the other major thing that I've found is, you know, there are, just as there are physical realities, you know, of your health, there are spiritual realities to your soul's health. And so if you're, uh, you know, eating some unhealthy food or whatnot, you're not gonna be feeling the best. If you're, you know, not drinking water, you're not gonna be feeling the best. If you don't eat any food for a long time, you'll get weakened, you know, and similarly, like when it comes to, as you know, immediately, if you don't be praying every day and, you know, reading your Bible, you can feel that spiritual drift start to happen, you know, very quickly. But the, I guess the way I like consider it that I've noticed is, you know, that's just like maintaining, but when you're actively like reaching out to people and like, you know, and one prayer that I've found is very beneficial saying, you know, Hey Lord, I'm, I'm lacking the courage to reach out in this situation. You know, I give you my, my voice, you know, open the door help me to say whatever you would like. And the more I actively reach out, the stronger my spiritual connection with the Lord becomes, you know, and uh, it kind of, I've heard, and I'm sure many people have heard this story. It's a sermon illustration, but it was a real story of a guy who got lost in a blizzard and he was about to curl up and die when all of a sudden he stumbled on another man. And so the other man was half dead himself. And so he kind of was like shaking him and decided to try and help drag the other guy. And just by trying to help drag the other guy, that kept him going, kept his blood flowing. So in the physical act of saving the other guy, he saved himself as well. And so, you know, I think there's a very similar spiritual reality, you know, that, hey, we got to, 
you know, have daily Bible study and prayer, just like daily you got to breathe and you got to take in an appropriate amount of, you know, calories with the right balance of vitamins and minerals, but at the same time, you know, going out of your way to, you know, to reach out to others, that's like pumping iron at the gym. You know, it's yeah. like, uh, you know, you know, getting that, getting that, you know, two mile jog in in the morning or whatever to really get that spiritual metabolism pumping and getting working. Amen. So I guess that's kind of one thing I've noticed over the years. And so as far as what I'd like to see done short term, um, there's a, a Bible study I'm attempting to get going with some friends that I've made recently. So I'm hopeful to, you know, get that up and going and maybe, you know, half dozen to a dozen people you know, attending, you know, just to kind of get that started. And, you know, then other than that, I guess, long-term, you know, I've uh, long struggled with uh, weight and obesity issues. And so, you know, I would love to see if I could be uh, a key factor in, um, getting a, uh, a bariatric focus health and wellness center that was also spiritually centered, um, especially around the new start concept, which is an acronym, um, for a whole healthful lifestyle. Um, do you, do you yeah. happen to know, uh, the, um, I knew you were going to ask me exactly what the acronym is and I don't remember all of it by heart. And I, I knew you were going to put me on blast like that, bro. So I'm kind no, of... No, no, because it's, it's really cool because I heard a, I heard a new, but start, new, new I, start. New start is I, nutrition, exercise. Um, S is... That's N-E... Oh, W. So N-E-W. N-E-W, yeah. Water, water. New, water. So new is nutrition, exercise, water. Start is... Uh, I don't know what the S is. What's the S? The S is sunshine. So Okay, sunshine. Yeah. Start, uh, sunshine. What's the, the rest tea. of it, man? The T is, uh, there are two T's. I know the last T is trust in God, that's yeah, like trust a in big God. one, but I don't know what the other T is. Um, wow, I can't the remember. R, the R at the very end of it is rest. I know that the A, the A is, uh, uh air. Is oh, air. yeah, air, fresh air. Yeah. Well, oh, that T, man. What's that other T? I can't remember. Start. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, it's a pretty good acronym for a, a very well-rounded, holistic yeah. you know, aspect of, you know, living your life, you know, to, you know, really combat a lot of these uh, health problems that are facing us, particularly here in, in these Western nations. And there there isn't one for a good... Uh, about a thousand miles in either direction from, you know, West Central Wisconsin. So I'm hoping someday the Lord can bless that I can, you know, be a key factor in getting one of them started right here in the in this area, the Chippewa Valley. Well, you that I can just rattle on about some of my super awesome ideas. <clears throat> what other ideas you have? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Oh, okay. This is uh, just a little bit of a duct tape production currently. Uh-huh. you know once uh said gets back in uh, america from visiting his wife and whatnot then we'll be trying to set up a little bit better of a dedicated studio area or whatever you want to call it oh yeah for sure for sure you know, get some better equipment and you whatnot see your name? you see your name bro what's up you see your name oh yeah thanks man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just noticed I could do that. So yeah, sorry, uh, still a little trial. I was here. actually thinking that we could drop off my last name and just put the TJ. Uh wow. Because I'm like, I, I almost thought you were going to give me a good idea, but yeah. Because uh, I'm that cool, so I'd be like, not just <laughs> TJ, I'd be like the TJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that one, there, bro. <laughs> Man, just a uh, hater. I tell you what, just a hater. Well, you still ain't gone with your vision. Right, you know, right. So. so, yeah, I, w- I was just going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, what would I like to see done for the Lord's work? <clears throat> and why is it important to you? You know, yeah. why you- come on, yeah. man. 
Yeah, Don't be uh, sticking yeah. on all part of the question. I wasn't. I wasn't. I was getting there. I, I wanted to. I wanted to tackle one at a time because you know, hey, that's all right. All right. You know, but but thank you for your involvement. I think I'm I'm about to mute you in a minute. But uh, <laughs> it's good to be the host. You're quite welcome, sir. <laughs> this is what I'm here for. <laughs> but yeah, um, um, what I what I would like to see done for the Lord's work is uh. You know, um, I've, I've actually um, been able to experience something called cold porting over the um, the summer, and um, it is something that I actually want to start doing on a full time basis because I, I for one, believe that the Lord has called me to it, and for two, um, you know, it, it's 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 a tremendous work where you're actually out there, and you're going door to door, you're going in parking lots, you're talking to people, you're offering them prayer, you you finding out, you know, the things that they're going going that they're going through. And you're able to apologize for a lot of the messed up things that Christians have done to people to have church hurt. And just over the over the years, you know, that um, uh, these, you know, Christians have done things on a self-righteous kind of basis, you know, um, and just hurt people and just hurt people, you know, um, instead of showing and, and telling them about the true love of Christ, you know, which... Um, which is a, a huge part of the just aspect of Christ as well. But we we get so entangled into our self-righteousness at times that we only want to tell them about the just and judgments, you know. And so um, and then and then because of our actions, they miss out on the glorious love that Christ has for them, you know. And so um because of that, I've I've been able to like um kind of like um help re-alter their uh, prejudice about Christians and Christ in general, you know, uh, me and a team of us, like, uh, this, this is just something that we do, you know, and in the process of it, you know, we, we leave books on a donation basis that could help heighten um, their understanding of God and Christ and Christianity and, um, and even their own um, issues that they might be going through. Um, inspirational books and devotionals and uh, and even the health books, uh, health cookbooks and that sort of thing that can help with their um, their physical health as well as emotional and that sort of thing, uh, mental and um, and so it, it it was a tremendous experience and uh, you know and I, uh, to me <clears throat> it's uh it's the work of an evangelist and that's why. We're called literature evangelists that basically go out there and um, you know and, and instead of, and it's not just a, a selling books job. It's to you know it's it's actually kind of getting in there, and 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 trying to see what their you know their issues are because I really truly believe that everyone who has a lot of issues and problems in their life, it, it, the the underlying issue is spiritual. It's always spiritual because we're connected uh, in a spiritual sense and in, in, in a bodily sense, you know, um, and, you know, um, um, well, I did a Bible study um, and I was in the process of doing it. You could catch a lot of it on my YouTube channel. It's uh, the whole, whole armor of God. Um, it was called, um, well, what, what was it called, uh, TJ? Uh, uh, fall protection, right? Something like that. And I think so, yeah. Basically, uh, the whole point of it was to basically um, trust God intrinsically with everything and every aspect of your life. And, it's, and it tells how, you know, the physical and the spiritual is, is, is necessarily connected and how um, basically every element that we go through on a, spirit, on a, on a physical level, rather it would be um, mental, uh, emotional, physical and then spiritual you know it, it, it's all connected it all starts from first a lack of spirituality you know what I mean and um and the the whole armor of God kind of brings us together sound in mind mentally physically spiritually and emotionally and so all of those all of those aspects are tied into uh, spiritual first and um, the more the more that I come to realize that, and I talk to people, I counsel people, I, I I have to let them know, you know, you know, being emotionally un unstable, or mentally unstable, or you know, um, you know, where you where you struggling with with uh, physical issues, you know, it, 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 um, 
things that you can necessarily do about it. I think that, you know, it, like I have to tell them that it's, it starts from a spiritual aspect first. Uh, usually it's because there's a, there's a, there, there's a, a longing for us to, to have worship of something, you know, and, um, and there's so many ways that I could bring that out about people, you know, uh, whereas, you know, you have your um, fanatics of sports, you have your fanatics of, of, of other things and other aspects of life and they, and, 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 and we as human beings, you know, we tend, we tend to take it above and beyond, you know, um, because we, we become, a, we, in a sense, we become obsessed with it and, and then it becomes a, a thing that we worship. And so <clears throat> with that being said, you know, um, when we find that that's not as fulfilling as it should be, or that it once was, uh, you know, we, we go, we go to another link and that uh, that's also how we become addicted to things, addicted to food, addicted to porn, addicted to games, addicted to gambling, addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, because in a sense, we're still trying to fulfill this thing that, that we all need to connect us to something that it was, is above and beyond ourselves. And that's where the spiritual connection comes in. And so um, with that being said, yeah, you know, um, we, we really truly, you know, um, and, and so I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for Christ. And one of the things that I do as an ambassador of Christ is, you know, uh, you know, I, I come in contact with people of all walks of life, you know, uh, whether you're LGBTQ, whether you're um, um, in, in witchcraft, um, you know, whether you're atheist, whether you're, you know, even other Christians and things like that. And to be totally honest with you, it's the Christians that I have a, a hard enough time with uh, dealing with because, you know, um, we, we all have this self-righteousness about ourselves. You know what I mean? Whereas we feel like we can't learn nothing from other people or from other walks of lives or any, anything like that, you know? And so, um, and, and most people that are caught up in, in those types of lifestyles, it's, be, it's because their church hurts some kind of way. You know what I mean? With, with other beliefs and Wiccan and, uh, uh, and, and that sort of thing, or even uh, those who are, um, um, you know, atheist or agnostic or whatever the case, every time, every time I, I, I would, I would ask him just a couple of questions. I would ask him, you know, have you been that, have you been that all your life and what brought you to that decision? Usually they, they haven't been that way all their life because, you know, they, they would say a lot of the times they say they grew up in church, but they got tired of seeing hypocrisy or they got tired of you know, um, uh, people just kind of just, uh, you know, making them seem like they're, they're nothing because they have different views or ideas or that sort of thing, you know. Now, I, I believe in not compromising, but I also believe that God meets us where we're at. And if we're supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus, then we're supposed to show them and be patient with them and guide them and, and teach them and, 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 and learn and even listen to them. You know what I mean? Listen to what they have to say. Listen to their feelings and their emotions. Don't just tell them they're wrong. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> and, that's, and that's something that I've learned too in my Christian walk as well, you know, um, as I grow in Christ myself and I learn by how he deals with me as somebody who is very errant and screws up a lot and that sort of thing and how patient he is with me and how still loving he is toward me and, and, and how he still shows me abundances of grace. And so um, in, that, in that sense, in turn, you know, it gives me the opportunity and, and the want and the know-how to expand that same um, grace and love and patience to others. And I'm still a work in progress. I'm, I haven't reached nowhere near where I need to be or where I even want to be, you know, with dealing with people. But, you know, like I say, the way God continues to show me how he deals with me is the way that I could continue to deal with others. And so I think that co-porting or being a, 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 a literature evangelist is definitely a very needed work for Christians. And I think that all of us you know, should at least try it, you know, and, and I believe that if you're really out here searching to win souls for Christ, you know, um, you know, 
even though you don't even see the, 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 the fruit of your labor, it's, you know, fully, you know, but just to see somebody's mind change about who God is, is a tremendous miracle in my, in my eyes. And so um, I would like to see more literature evangelism going on out there, you know, and uh, in fact, I, um, as, as far as uh, what I'm doing to accomplish the work, uh, I, I'm, I'm in the process of, you know, including with uh, TJ's help here, um, and others, you know, whom I've been working with and talking to, um, we're in the process of actually starting a, um, a type of um, business, if you will, or I don't even want to call it that, but a ministry that's geared toward just that, just that in different states and uh, especially in our state, because I live in Wisconsin, I'm in Minnesota, but I live in Wisconsin. And I believe that that's my mission field that the Lord has me for me right now. And so um, that's, you know, uh, but I, I also plan on moving from state to state with it as well. And so, um, yeah, so that's my answer for that. And uh, I'm not sure if PJ is going to get back on. Um, I tried to call him, but he didn't answer. So I don't know if he's having some, some issues. Yeah, that's with this, that's uh, fine. Wi-Fi. And then uh, one thing, if I could interject, you know, when you're okay. talking about you know, you don't necessarily want to call it a business. No, I believe that we need to be far more intentional about serving God to the point where we actually do incorporate it in a business-like fashion, you know, because a lot of us think that, well, anything done with and for the Lord should be done, you know, out of, you know, exuberance or enthrallment where, you know, we're in that mountaintop, you know, type of scenario but you know the mountaintops are awesome but the the fields of wheat are down in the valleys and so you know and when you're you know harvesting you don't just skip around the vineyard you go about it in a methodical you know pre-planned way to try and reach as many souls as possible with the love and knowledge of the lord and so it works hand in hand. So yeah, absolutely. What like, uh, like CD, you know, alluded to, uh, we're looking at partnering with, uh, some local congregations in the area here to be, you know, book suppliers and such for this literature evangelist work that is, you know, really seeking to, you know, on a mass scale, spread the word of the Lord to those who wouldn't find themselves of their own planning in a Bible bookstore or some such a place or a church's library. This is, you know, meeting people out in the street in their day-to-day lives to offer them access to the word of the Lord. And a lot of people, it turns out to be that it was exactly what they weren't looking for, but needed. And so they, you know, you know, looking back, they're glad that they, you know, met that literature evangelist and were able to come to the Lord through that. So yeah, that's a portion. And I don't know if you wanted to save for later your long-term goal or not, but. um, Yeah, yeah. I I think that's kind of where I wanted to leave it at um, as far as my long-term goal, but I do have. Then we'll leave that as a to be continued. No, I can mention it. I I can mention it. Um, Well, not because we got to leave them hanging on something. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> you can mention it now or not it's up to you well okay yeah i'll leave it at that for now but yeah right. um because i think i think we're uh definitely uh uh almost at the half hour mark where um uh, i kind of want to be cut off at half hour 45 minutes um but yeah just suffice to say you'll be hearing more in the future about this endeavor that uh cd is wanting to do with uh some of his family members and i'm going to definitely kind of involve myself wanted or not in that whole process <laughs> well yeah 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 so yeah. anyway yeah that's still in the making i still got to talk to some more family about that and stuff like that but yeah it still seems like it's, it's it's a go uh or it could be a go we got that in prayer as well and just seeing where god is leading as far yeah, as just to pique right. your interest the uh, dear viewer for the future <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and so with that being said, uh, that's going to conclude our first segment. And uh, it's going to get even more exciting from here on, uh, trust me. 
I have some people lined up to uh, interview. I have some people lined up, uh, some discussions lined up that we are going to discuss as well, um, as well as uh, some other things. Just really good ideas. Uh, some people from some some very interesting backgrounds and uh, just some topics that I really believe that you guys are going to uh, highly enjoy. So please continue to stay tuned with us. Um, when, um, when you get on here, uh, this is our channel. This is my channel. It's called Reasoning Together. Uh, click like, uh, share, and subscribe. Thanks again, and God bless.